theyeshiva.net. A good chodesh, everybody. Welcome. We're in the middle of the Maimer Hanois and Shalik Katsomer of the Balatanya. In his Siddur, on page 126, the second column, the new paragraph, Vizehu. Vizehu Arashi Achayis. Rakia Kein Hakera Hanoira. Vizehu. Al Rashi Hachayis Rakia Kein Hakera Hanoira. As we mentioned earlier, in the in the vision of the Navi Yecheskel, known as the Maisa Merkava, Yecheskel speaks about the Chayos Hakodesh, whom we also speak about in davening, right? Vayfanem Vachayos Hakodesh, which literally means the angelic beings. Literally means the sacred animals, the sacred living beings, Chayos. So the Yecheskel has a moment of, in his vision and he says on the heads, on top of the Chayas, I saw a Rakia. A Rakia means a heaven, a firmament, like something spread out. Leroika ha'aretz alamayim. Something that's spread out as a covering is called Rakia. I saw like a, a, a cover, a roof, a firmament, a heaven. Ke'ein ha'kerech ha'noira. It looked like uh, what we would call today glaciers, right? <laughs> awesome ice, not just a sheet of ice. Not just thick eyes, but Kerech Hanoira. You have these awesome, massive, fearsome glaciers. You ever went on those uh, yeah. <laughs> glacier tours? It's, uh, it's, it's an intense scene. So that's what he calls Kerech Hanoira, the awesome ice, the fearsome ice. Now, obviously, he uses the word Kerech Hanoira to illustrate it, to give a metaphor, to give a marshal. What is the nimshal though? So Pirush, the deeper meaning is, actually the, the nimshal is, Kedeshi is hava metzias, his spilus hamidus ava veyira vekayetze. Mepchines hachachma, tzadach lias, ayedei pchines tzimtzum vehelem beemtza. Vuhu pchines hakerach asher al rashi hachayas. Translation, for there to emerge, is have for there to emerge into existence. A reality which we call his spilus hamidais, the emotional experience of midas, whether it's love or awe, similar, which ultimately flows, it comes from a state of chachma. There has to first be a tzimtzum, a contraction and a concealment as an intermediary phase. And this is called the kerach, this is the ice, which is a top, on top of the heads of the Chayas. So the Chayas would be a marshal for the Midas. And on top of it, in other words, in order to be able to get to that place, on top of the Rosh Chayas, above them, ahead of them, preceding them, is a Tzimtzum and a Helem, which allows from the Chachma to be the Midas. Meaning, the Pnei Arye, Pnei Sher, Chuli, Shubchines Hamidus. When Yecheskel speaks about Chayes HaKadosh, these are known as the Merkava. Merkava literally means a chariot. And Yecheskel saw a chariot, which again is a vision, it's a metaphor. And there are the four faces. The face of the lion on the right, and the face of the ox, the Pnei Sher, on the left. And there's the face of the eagle, and is the face of the man. And these are all the Merkava. They are the chariot, just like a chariot is a coach. And on the chariot, you have a person sitting in his chair on the coach. So Merkava here, it's not a physical coach. It's a spiritual coach represented by these four wheels or four angels, four faces. And then there's Adam Ha'elya and Sha'ala Kise. The expression Kise Hakava, the throne is on the Merkava. And there's the Adam on the Kise. What is the metaphor of Chayes, Pnei Arya, Pnei Sher? He says it's the concept of Midas. Midas is what we call our emotional experiences. V'yadua she'ein erech, klal, bein muhus ha-midas, in muhus ha-seichel. There is a complete, there's a huge gulf between the world of Midas, the essence of Midas, and the world of Seichel. The world of Seichel is the world of perception, Awareness, intellectual, an intellectual vision and clarity. Achayidei shenis tzamtzim ha-seichel b'b'chines parsa ke'ena kerach. 
So the seichel has to freeze, so to speak, and go through a tzimtzum b'pchines parsa. Parsa... Is he using seichel as a synonym for chachma here? Yeah. Yeah. So if the chachma, the seichel, is, a metaf- is represented by water, the water has to freeze and become so compacted and so hard and frozen like ice in order for there to be the metamorphosis from the world of Seichel to the world of Midas. And that's called a Parsa. Parsa is the Aramaic translation of a Mosach. In these weeks, Parshias, Truma, Tetzave, Vayakel, Pkude, you have the Mosach. The Mosach, you'll see in the Targum, every time it says Mosach, usually it says Parsa. Mosach is a partition. In Chaydem and Gazak, a Farhang, yeah? A Farhang. A curtain, a veil, a partition, which they had, for example, in the entrance to the Mishka. A paroiches, sometimes it's called a paroiches, also called a parsa. The word parsa means it's like the word pras, it's also connected to the word pras. There's a partition that breaks up two sections. And what happens in the next section is a different reality. That's why you put a curtain, that's why you put a door, you put a wall, you put a veil, in order to create separations. Spiritual, in spiritual terms, it means. The, the energy of one place needs to be, it can't just flow directly. The Kodesh HaKadoshim has to be maintained. So there's a parsa that separates. Is there a union here? Maybe because in order for Chochmah to be transferred, it needs to be in kind of liquid form. Because the uh, ice is crystal. It's, uh, it's, it's very rigid form to, to, to be able to transfer to completely different realm. Water can't be. Flexible. More flexible. Uh, more, tra- more fluid. It's right. Flows. Yeah. It flows. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about the, the flow here. So what flows is, 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 is water. Yeah. Yeah, and the kerach is water. It's just yeah. the water, the way it's frozen. It's crystal in a crystal form, exactly. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, ice, ice is also from ice flow, like the scapa ice flow. And right. Sand. So it's a level, it's a, it's a lower part. So is that how it works? Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's called. It goes through a certain symptom. It goes through a certain transformation. He says, "Bebchines parsa ke'en hakerach vuhu," and this is connected to what we call meitzer hagaron. Meitzer hagaron means the constraints of the throat. Garin is the throat which biologically, physically, represents the partition between the cerebral part of the person or the brainy part of the person and the midos which are felt in a very palpable way in the heart, in the lave. So the journey from the mind to the heart goes through a very narrow metzar, like the word metzar, mitzarim, restraints. Right? Metzar is like in, in halacha we have boundaries. But the word metzar, even mitzrayim, comes from the word mitzarim, which means restrictions, which is what a boundary is. A boundary means here are the demarcations. I am restricted to this, uh, to this territory. That's what a metzar is. A metzar creates a demarcation. So metzar hagarim means there's a restricted flow through the throat, which is very narrow. In fact, the narrowest, the narrowest part of the human, human body, that's where it narrows in. Why? Because the journey from seichel to midas is a... Is, a, is, a, is often a tough one. It's, you know, it's one lane and there's a lot of traffic. It's also those the cerebral cords. The cerebral cords, yeah. Shaboy mis alam bevoy belev. So to speak, there the seichel freezes. It gets concealed on some level in order for it to be able to reemerge in the lave as a new entity where the ice melts. The dilemma, this is enough to he. To he, to, for he who understands, as he always says, as a Yavoy or told us, Hamidus ben only after it goes through that parsa, that kerach, that meitzar hagarain, you need that journey in order for there to be the birth of a new child. And this child, who even though the child has been impregnated in the womb of the mother, and the embryo comes from the father and the mother, father is called Chachma, the mother is called Bina. But the ultimate, and the relationship between them is called das, va'adam yada es chava. But the toldos hamid is for, for the child to be born, min hasechel. It, it goes through the meitzer agar and it goes through this process of kerach or parsa for the seichel to be able to be morphed into a reality called midos. There is expression called crystal clear. 
So it's safe, everything is crystal clear. That's why it's ice. It's crystal. <laughs> crystal clear, yeah. <laughs> That's the kerach. Kein ha yeah. Or the shalag, yeah. As Ayavi er told us, Hamidus ben Asach. What is the shortest? Are you familiar with the, if you're familiar with the map, what, which is in the world the shortest highway? I don't know, 12 inches maybe, between 10 and 15 inches, the shortest highway but it's the hardest to get through that highway. The traffic in that highway, to get through that highway, is, it's, it's, it's beyond. And the answer is the highway between the head and the heart. <laughs> it's a very short highway. It's one lane. <laughs> it's called Meitzar Hagarin. But it's one lane, but yet the cars are going in both directions. And uh, it's not so easy to get through. And that's why it's called Meitzar. Because a person could get stuck. Because the world of Seichel and the world of Midas, even though essentially they're so close to each other, they're also distant from each other. The world of Seichel is a world of awareness. The world of Midas is a world of experience. Seichel is cerebral. It's intellectual. That's what say, the job of the mind is. The job of the mind is to objectively analyze, dissect, think through. The world of Midas is my experience. I experience it. Midas is extremely subjective. It's me. That's why we call it Hispilus. Hispilus Amidas. The word Hispilus, like in Yiddish, you say, Chapnash can Hispilus. Don't get so emotional. Why is Hispilus connect? The word Hispilus comes from the word Pu'ula. It affects you. Something really affects you. It penetrates you. The person says, I got emotional. I'm emotional. That's where human life is in emotional experiences, in Midas. The journey from Seichel to Midas is not a simple journey. It's like a child has to be born. All Midas are preceded by Seichel. Seichel are the parents of the Midas. Cognition is the... Cognition precedes emotion. Every emotion that we have, positive, negative, uplifting, denigrating, an exhilarating emotion, a very challenging emotion, an emotion that causes us tremendous pain or an emotion that causes us tremendous simcha, tremendous joy, an emotion that opens you up, an emotion that closes you. Any emotion is always preceded by awareness. And that awareness is what translates into an emotion. Now, we often don't see it that way, because the emotion takes over. The baby grows up and becomes a very strong baby and sometimes a monster. But essentially, the baby doesn't come from nowhere. The baby is Nishke Mamzer. There's a father and there's a mother. And therefore, one could trace back the Midah to the Seichel. What is the awareness? What, are the, what is the consciousness? What is the perspective that is fueling this emotion? Now, when I'm in an emotional state, it's very hard to do because <laughs> I'm in an emotional state. But when I could uh, sit back or, or move back a little bit, zoom out and ask myself, what triggered this emotion? Two people can hear the same thing from somebody. One person for the next day is ice mensch. He can't function. And the other person is fine. We both heard the same thing. Or one day I can hear the same thing, the other day I hear the same thing, and a completely different response. And the answer is that we never get emotional by what somebody said or did. It's by how we process what they said or did. It's about how I think, how I understand what you said and did. Which means that the responsibility for emotions is in your court. It's not in somebody else's court. It's very easy to blame somebody else. He's such a this, she's such a that. Which may be true, may not be true. Maybe 50% true, maybe 90% true. It's almost, it's not irrelevant, but in this discussion it's irrelevant. What this means is I have to take responsibility because the father and the mother, the father and mother who brought the child into existence. This child wasn't created in a vacuum. But it, it's also a very empowering idea because it means change your mind, change your find. Change your perception of things. That's my poetic abilities. You didn't know that. Yeah. But I won't quit my day job. <laughs> 
And, and, and this, this, is, this is sometimes a serious avoider. And that's the exercise for today. The exercise for today, Rish Chodesh Adr Sheni, is throughout the day, at work or at the home or somewhere else, or even on the highway, somebody will trigger you. <laughs> You'll get triggered. Instead of thinking about that guy or that person and what, how crazy or obnoxious or rude or dysfunctional or whatever the nice words, uh, which again may be true or may not be true, it's almost irrelevant. Can I ask myself a harder question? And that is, what is it? What is the neshama behind this midah? What's the fuel behind it? What did it awaken in me? What did it arouse in me? And you'll, if you're honest with yourself, maybe you need help from somebody else, because ein adam chavosh atzmei, ein adam ein chavosh I can't always uh, undo the shackles and open up the handcuffs on me. So sometimes I'm so biased and I'm so emotional I can't do it. But with uh, with with guidance, guidance from my own soul, my own honesty, and sometimes other people or another person a mentor, whatever it is, I can learn and discover that there was a seichel behind this midah. And that seichel is completely inside of me. There's a way I look at the world. There's a way I understand things. There's a way I process things. And when you said that, it triggered something in me that has to do with me. It has nothing to do with you. What do the therapists like to say? It's not the story. Uh, What's that mantra? The story is not the story, yeah? The story about the story. The issue. It's the issue about the issue. But what is it? <laughs> the issue is not the issue. The issue, issue, the issue, issue. is your issue with the issue. Okay. <laughs> so, so sometimes, yeah, they say that Freud once said that sometimes a cigar is only a cigar. Okay. So sometimes there's an issue. <laughs> sometimes there's an issue. We, <laughs> but the point is, that every middah is preceded by seich. This is just one application of it. There are so many applications of it. But the point is, the world of seich and the world of middahs are so close, but they're also so far apart. In the world of seich, it's really a world of transcendence. It's really a world where real seich, in real seich, I'm not supposed to exist. The worst thing for a scientist, or lahavdul, a rav, a teacher is when you have subjective biases in what you're teaching, in what you're trying to, to discover. A scientist who's studying uh, the Big Bang or cosmology or DNA, and he has a subjective taiva that the science should produce a certain result, it will destroy the scientific integrity of it. And you see it constantly. Intellectual, it's called shaykha. There's bribery of money and there's worse bribery. Bribery of bias. And in, in a way it's worse because it's not tangible. It can be justified. This is what the world needs. But really I'm tr- completely trapped. And remember, the mind is very pliable. We could take it wherever we want. The same is true, imagine, there's a Din Torah, and a Rav has to pask in its Chosh and Mishpat, and he has a certain bias for whatever reason. It, it tarnishes the whole experience. That's where the Gemara says, La'olam yeheya b'fanecha din prutaka din meya. Judging a dollar has to have the same integrity like judging a case of $20 million. Two people come and they're fighting over $50. The truth is the same for the $50 it will be for $10 million. In terms of emotions, it's not exactly the same. But in terms of truth, the world of Seichel is a world that in many ways demands detachment. It demands transcendence of self. Real Seichel is, I'm looking for the emiss of something, irrelevant of who I am, what I feel. The less you exist, the better the seichel. <laughs> That's why it's called objective. Objective. So subject. Exactly. And the more, now there's always a subject involved because there's a person, but the more you can, the more you can transcend yourself, that is the journey that seichel demands. Seichel demands isolation, introspection. People who are bali seichel are, 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 are by nature also more segregated and isolated. Somebody will say, you know, mommy, you're too emotional about this. <laughs> you can't have an opinion about it. Why can't you have an opinion? The best opinion if you're emotional. And the point is, I want an opinion that's completely so there's no strings attached. That's the world of Seich. The world of Midas is the exact opposite world. 
The world of Midas is the world where I am fully alive, I am fully present. It's how the truth affects me. I'm not looking here for mathematical truth. I'm not looking here for scientific truth. I'm not looking here to understand the Gemara, to understand the Taisvus. I never saw a yeshiva bach or anybody learning a shtickle Gemara. Reuven killed Shimon. And he gets angry at Reuven. You murderer, you lowlife. You killed Shimon. And then you're in court nach. People don't get angry when they learn Gemara. And that, why? And the answer is because it's a hypothesis. It's a hechi timtza to understand the svara. The Reuven is not Reuven, Shimon is not Shimon, the killing is not killing. It's a concept. That's what it is. Gemaris in Baba Bas, all these Gemaris, but there's a bunch of liars. People are always lying. It's my house, it's not my house. You did it, you didn't do it. I bought it, I didn't buy it. Why don't you get upset at this shakran? <laughs> but what happens if somebody does it to you? <laughs> it's not in Gemara. <laughs> if somebody does it to you, ooh, what, what's the difference? This is the world of Seichel, the world of Midas. This is the world in which it's not, it's, not, it's not a Gemara anymore. It's not on the bookshelf. It's here. It affects me. It affects my experience. That's the world of Midas. The world of Midas is a very immediate, intimate experience. That's where life comes out. That's where relationships come out. Seichel without Midas is a computer. <laughs> it's called artificial intelligence. It does much better work than people. They don't need vacation, they don't take off, they don't complain, there's no lunch hour, they're not texting. That's why artificial intelligence may take over a lot of the planet when it comes to work. They don't have issues with their boss, they don't have emotional needs, they don't need a coffee break, they don't have to know the latest gossip in town. They do the right thing, you put in the data and the data produces. Sometimes you'll say a person is like a computer. But what's there's one thing missing, what's one thing this is... The life, the vitality, the relationship, the fact that I could affect you and you could affect me. Imagine a person tells their friend or their spouse, just know something about me. There's nothing you can say that will ever affect me. Nothing that you do will ever affect me. I don't have emotions. It's the be best relationship, right? But it's also the, there's no relationship. There's no relationship. There's no person. I'm not talking to anybody. It's stuck in hearts. Who's the hearts? Where's your heart? And sometimes it's a challenge because uh, in intellectual circles where intellect is so promoted, often midas are neglected. You know, the IQ becomes superior to the EQ. In real life, it's the other way around. Emotional intelligence is far more uh, important in so many ways than your IQ. Not to underestimate the value of an IQ and so forth, but... Uh, very often, and sometimes in educational systems, there's no credence given to the value of emotional intelligence, of empathy, of relationships, of emotions. It's all another svara, another svara, another svara. And the world of emotion sometimes gets cut out of a person's life. He's a big orthopedic surgeon, very well known in Yiddish circles. He operated a lot of the front people. My brother trained with him at one point. He said, he once said to him something because he had a reputation of being extremely health dimension to his patient. He once said to him, he said, we've never yet had a randomized clinical study showing that good bedside manner really, really yields better results in a, in a hip replacement. And if there'll be such a randomized study, you know, it was, it was such, a, such a great story. <laughs> Only he could say that. Very good. Right, go, go argue. He can't argue. Okay, you're right. I guess you're right. Well, you're right or wrong. It's very hard to argue. So das, das is in the intermediary phase. Because das is making the seichel personal. Das is what allows the seichel to ultimately translate into midas. Das is still seichel, but it's making it personal. It's making it relevant, let's put it that way. Huh? But it's still intellect. Midas is the actual emotional experience. It's the feeling. That's why we associate it with the heart. Everything is in the brain, of course. But it's very much connected with the heart. That's where it's expressed. It's manifested. You know, you filters in the heart. You feel it in the heart. So it was under a person's control? I would say to a certain degree it's under a person's control. I'm not going to say always and everything. But to a certain degree... We have a certain control what we're going to think about, 
how much time we're going to spend on it. We, we have control to open ourselves up to conversations. And like we spoke in the earlier shurim, to listen. <laughs> so Das is making the ideas relevant, personal. But it's still on an idea level. Adam yode chava is a metaphor for intimacy. But in the world of Das, means Das means knowledge. Chachma bina Das, acronym of Chabad, are all regions in the brain. Zoyar says there's the right brain, there's the left brain. Chachma is like what we call today, you know, right brain people. Big picture, inspiration. Bina is left brain people. You know, it's very detailed oriented. That's what Bina is. And it's, it's a feminine quality as well. It's details, it's taking the sperm and, and building the fetus. And then there's Das. And then there's the concept of Midas. So the Balatanya says here that the journey from Seichel to Midas is a significant journey. And in that journey, the idea goes through a transformation. It's almost like the embryo is frozen into a Kerach, in some type of Parsa, that then allows for a new reality to emerge. It's like, you know, you put it on one side of the machine and it comes out on the other side of the machine, but it's a completely new creature. All Midas is really ideas that are being translated in an emotional language. Emotional language is the language of Seichel, but it went through. It's, it's, it's a different language. The, lang- the way Seichel addresses reality is not the way Midas address reality. So they're really speaking about the same reality. The ice comes from the water, and the ice is going to melt into water. But there's a transformation that happens in that process between the language of Seichel, which is the language of abstractions, of transcendence, of truth, and the language of Midas, which is the language of my experience of it, my experience of life, my relationship of life. And they're both so important, because Seichel without Midas, as I said, you could be a lifeless computer. Midas without Seichel doesn't have the guidance, the mentorship, and you can never take responsibility for it. Huh? It doesn't have the competence. It's like a child raising himself, like an infant raising himself. Go figure it out. What's the role of parents? The role of parents is never to squash children. It's never to, you know, uh, I once heard a speaker get up, it was a little shocking to me, and said, uh, th- th- there were ch- it was in a shul, and there were children in the shul. And you know, children are not always interested in sermons. Adults are also not interested in sermons. But adults, you know, talk about it afterwards. Children will tell you immediately, you know. It's not, uh, so uh, the speaker got very, very annoyed. And the speaker gets up and says, I've always said in my life, I quote almost verbatim from my memory, <laughs> almost verbatim. I've said, I've maintained throughout my entire life that children are, gr- that, ta- that children are a great idea. And great ideas should be carried out. <laughs> that was his diplomatic way of expelling the peanut gallery of the synagogue. I don't know how many people got it right away, but the great ideas should be carried out. Yeah. So the truth is that we, we, that the function of Seichel is never to crush children, to crush emotion. Like, don't get emotional. To say not to get emotional is amputating one of the most important components of life. What happens when your child throws a tantrum? Or when you throw a tantrum emotionally? (laughs) So maybe you don't throw toys, but you throw a tantrum inside, you know, you throw your pen, you decide not to take telephone calls. What happens? So some people will look at the child and, and right away, here's a Danish, here's cheesecake, here's ice cream. Here's a coloring book. Okay, I'm going to take you for pizza. Okay, I'll give it. Why? I just don't want you to scream. I don't want you to cry. Yeah. Then there's the other extreme. Don't scream here in this house. You don't scream. You don't throw tantrums. We don't do this. Now, one, they seem opposite from each other. But they're very similar to each other. In other words, I cannot deal with emotions. <laughs> we don't deal with that here. Just figure out a way of, <laughs> of getting it out of the system. You need cake? Cake. That's why when we're 40, we're eating cake when we get emotional. <laughs> because at three, I was given a Danish when I threw a tantrum. It's just whatever you need, but you just got to get rid of this. 
And this is, this is what's called repression. That's not the way to do it. The way to do it, and, 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 and this is part of life. I mean, getting upset about this is also part of life. It's not, it's not about judgment about anybody. It's very hard. The point here is, what if I could say, you know, I, I, I know you're sad, and I know you're emotional about something, and I'm sorry for that. And now let's figure out how to deal with it. It's a whole different experience, that. It gives room for it. But then the seichel could be brought in to guide, to mentor, to take responsibility for it, to be able to trace it back, to be able to identify it, essentially. The whole field in our generations of cognitive behavioral therapy is really based on these two, three, four lines here, that all midas are children. And children can always be traced back to seichel, which means you, ha- you can take responsibility for it. Yeah. Yeah. At least, at least on a conscious level, there are. There is. You want to know what comes first, the chicken or the egg? At least on a conscious level, you're touching on something. But uh, let's not go there right now. Okay. Sensations form. Get a sensation, and then you put a needle on it, and then you get a story kind of belief. Sensation in the... That's part of seichel, in a certain degree, to a certain degree. You get a tightness in your chest. Oh, you mean the physical sensation. sensation and then you put a meter on it, <laughs> then you have a story and a belief, and you have the behavior that you're abused. Right. So sometimes the sensation can take you into a, an unconscious seichel. That's trauma therapy. That's what trauma therapy does. Because you don't have access to your awareness. Sometimes I need my sensations to teach me what is going on inside of me. In other words, the sensation allows me to figure out my subconscious cycle. You said two days ago that if someone wants to commit suicide, that's just a choice they make from a sensation. That is really changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I need sensation in order to be able to become aware of what's going on, because I don't know. There's so much trauma or denial or repression or suppression, and the sensation is really my key to awareness. Yeah, always. The body holds the score, right? The body holds the score. The body keeps the score. Yeah. The body, the body contains seats of the, a lot of awareness in it, and you can't fool it. So when I feel my body, it's, it, it allows me access to what's go, a lot of what's going on. Yeah. 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 It's basically, it's like it's your input devices to your. Yeah. Like like a input devices, yeah, by a computer, yeah. It's an external situation, cause an emotion. Of course, emotions are often caused by external situations, but it's the way I interpret the external situation. It's not physical. It's physical pain. It's also Of course. Of course. Shoveling the snow. Right? Shoveling snow. Some people turn it into a party. Family goes out, negate shoveling, and the more tired you are, the more fun it is. And for other people, it's like the curse of their day. A flat tire, yeah? You ever see the difference between Gentiles have a flat tire and Jews have a flat tire? You ever see the difference on the highways? Gentiles make a sudo seda. You buy a beer, you get down on your feet, you take out the jack, mahep tuf, celebidic. Yeah, he invites his friends, six people are there, they're all on the floor, their heads are under the car, I'm a chaya. Ten minutes later, tchiz hamesim, and the guy is off. Beautiful. You ever see a Jew by a flat tire? He's with a cigarette. He's calling chaveirim. Yeah, he's upset at the whole world. Uh, he's suing the company. You know what I mean? Meantime, he goes to buy potato chips. It's the worst day of his life. He said, why don't you go down? Take a, you have a spear? I should now go take a spear? That's why I rented this car, so I should go deal with spears. You never saw this on the Palisades on the 17th. That's what I was created for. My mother told me I was Einstein. My mother told me I was God. Now I should go change tires? 
Avada, avada, but that's good. <laughs> Your seichel is working well. If a lion is coming into the room, you should jump out of the window. That's a very, that's a very good midah. That's that, 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 that's that's called. You're alert. You're healthy. The challenge is if a person thinks that a lion comes into the room, but a lion is not coming into the room, but you are reacting as though a lion came into the room. It's an hallucination. Response. So then I really have to go back and say, what, what did you just say that represents for me a lion that came into the room? Or what did you just do? Or, but if a lion comes into the room, very good. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Your, your midas are functioning well. Your body is functioning well. It creates a sensation on every level. There's a seichel and there's a mida, and the response is very profound and very appropriate. Most people can process this they observe, feel fear. You're right. When, they're f- when I'm in the intensity of it, I can't. Because I'm overtaken by it. I become subjective. I'm now in the greatest place of shaykha. That's why the Baal Shem Tov once said, never say anything when you're very angry for 61 minutes. Kassar Shem Tov, he says, when you're angry for 61 minutes, you shouldn't open your mouth. I know people that in the midst of their anger, they got divorced, they sold their house, they sold their business, they cut relationships, right? And then they wake up a day later and like, oh my God. But when you're so angry, awareness shuts down. I'm just too overwhelmed. I'm very, very angry. In the beginning you're saying with Vashti, yeah. He was drunk, so we get drunk. There's different types of getting drunk. Now, to give a comparison of this more mipsari yechza meaning for my flesh, kamoi chatzar hakovid shemafsik ben evrei haneshimel evrei hamazen. It's interesting. It's like the diaphragm. Chatzar hakovid is the diaphragm, which is really a mechitza. It's a partition between evrei haneshima between the higher organs, which are responsible for the respiratory system, for breathing, and Avery Hamazoin, and the lower system, which is responsible for digestion of food. So you'll have the heart and the lungs, the liver, and then you'll have what's called Chatzar HaKovid, which exists in mammals, in humans and animals. We have it in the Carbonus, Chatzar HaKovid. And the Chatzar HaKovid is like a dome, uh, the doctor will help me out here, a dome-shaped muscle, I think you could say, and it contracts and expands with the ear coming into the lungs. It contracts and allows the ear to come into the lungs, inhale, expands and allows the ear to come out of the lungs. So it's really in a constant motion of tzimtzum and espashtus, of contracting and expanding, and is responsible for the respiratory system. When you look at it in the body, and it's interesting that the, the body was created with this, which becomes essential to the breathing, but essentially it becomes like a mechitza. It's mamish like a partition, like a mechitza between the lower level of the body, which now deals with the abdomen and everything that comes with the abdomen, the stomach and everything, and the whole digestive system. And in biology, they still try to understand exactly what's the real purpose of the diaphragm. What is its ultimate function? We know of the function that it expands and contracts, which helps the lungs, allows the lungs to take in air and expand the air. Its position, its shape, and its elaborate nature is one of the Balatanya sees that it really begins with a spiritual concept, that there's a parsa, there's a hefsek. It is like a mechitza, chatzara covered, which is mafsek, between the shima and mos. What's pshat? It's every anashima kirei of alev heimadakim the limbs that are connected with the respiratory system, the lungs, the heart, are dakim b'yoyse. Dakim b'yoyse means very subtle, very edel, very, very edel. And it comes out in Hilchas Trefus that a damage there, perforation, you're dealing with organs that are very vital and very, very dak, extremely subtle, very sensitive. Eivre hamazoy, the limbs that are connected with the digestive system, the digestive system in the body, kekeva, the keres, the, the stomach, the abdomen, hey magasim, harbe mehem kiyadua. They are more what you would call 
more coarse or more, uh, more dense, more tough. Ki you do as known. In pure biological terms, it's hard to understand the transformation. It's not two organisms. The kona, which is the windpipe. And the veshet, which is the food pipe. The esophagus and the kona, the windpipe, known as the trachea, in the lungs and in the heart, they continue, they extend. The hema atzma, they extend into the keris and the keva. The diaphragm here is very impactful, which represents the separation. The chatzar covid really represents a transformation from the part of the body that is sensitive more to spirit and ear, ruach, which is connected with ruchnius, the part of the body where there is the digestion and the breakup and the absorption of the food that comes into us. All of this is a metaphor spiritually when there's a transformation from the world of Seichel to Midas. It's always the water is congealed, it's frozen into Kerach, and here it goes through a metamorphosis, and what comes out on the other side could be a new reality. But didn't you say that happens higher up in the Garon? Right. That's what we're talking about, Seichel and Midas. He's giving another example for this, yet on a lower level. And we'll soon see why there's the two, mish- why there's the two elements. He's saying now go downwards is the same thing. In other words, from in every step you need a parsa. From one type of midah to another type of midah is also a parsa. From one type of seichel to another type of seichel is also a So Yechezkel says, on top of the midahs is ke'ein ha'kerach ha'noira, is the awesome glacier. Shu p'chines ha'parsa ha'mavdelas l'shanes ha'mohus me'chach bula midahs. There's the parsa ha'mavdelas, there's the havdola that creates the transformation from chachma to midahs. V'zel ke'ein ha'kerach. And that's the diuk of ice. Ki oisius kerach u oisius chirik. The word kerach is the same letter as like chirik, which is also charak in Hebrew. You know what charak? Meitzitz, you remember the Lashon? Mashgech menachaloynes, meitz mecharakim. But that's charakim with a chof. So over there it's a crack, right? A crack, like a peephole in the door. Meitz mecharakim. Here it's with a kof. What's chirik? The answer is, from all the Nekudos, you have a Komet, you have a Patach, you have a Segel. You remember the Komet's, uh, Komet's Olive Base? The Chirik is Nekuda Achas Shetachas Asvan. The Chirik is always a seminal point, a contracted tiny point on, under the letters. Two points, it's on Nekuda and it's Tachas Asvan, not on top. V'ubchines habitl b'metziyiz v'heder. The Nikuda represents just like ice, takes the water that's flowing all over the place. It's a flow, it's a, it's in a, in a fluid. And it it compacts it and freezes it, condensing it into this Nikuda, which is called Kerach, which represents the bitl. And the header ice pashto is the lack of expansiveness. That's the Nikuda of Kerach, that's the Chirik where the water becomes mitzumtzum into a nekuda, where it's almost lost, so to speak, in order for it to be able to go through to a, go to a transformation into a new midah. Which means that the seichel has to condense into a nekuda of chirik in order to be able to translate into the water of the midahs that's post-kerach. And this is on both levels, from the teacher's side and from the student's side, like we said. From the recipient's side and from the giver's side. From the giver's side, the teacher who has brilliant wisdom has to condense it and freeze the information so it should be able to be accessible and suitable for the student. From the student's side, we learned, he has to be able to reduce himself to an akuda and completely remove the eye to be able to experience a symptom within himself to be able to absorb the new information, the new material. So it's a kerach on both levels, chirik on both levels. And therefore, if he's in a state of his pashtus, like we learned, if he's in a state of his pashtus, of expansiveness, he can't really be makabal. 
To be Makabal, you need a Nakuda of Bittal completely, where he's almost becomes nothing but a Nakuda. I'm, I'm a little Chirik, which is also connected to the word Chur besides the Kuf, which means a hole, there's an opening. Right? The chur of the machat, the opening. But here we're talking about the chirik, which is the kerach. So the water is flowing all over the place, water expands, and here you, you compact yourself, you're completely in a state of bitl. Also, we know in our thought process, right? What's the challenge with ADDs and so forth? My mind is all over the place. I really have to be able to zoom in. But well, that's the difference actually on the physical level between the ice and water, because ice, from the, the, thing, the, the way the molecules of uh, H and O are set, they're <laughs> sure. They're set in order. They're yeah. Very, they're not wild. They're not wild. Molecules in water are all over the place. It's like bumping cars. So if a teacher is all over the place, he cannot teach right. anybody. Yeah. The Kerach, what happens in the snow is, when, when water freezes, the molecules of water are now very organized and situated like in rows in a very organized fashion. And that's what the teacher has to do. The teacher has to take ideas that may be very intense, but if he reveals them as they are, it's chaos. For him, it may not be chaos because his molecules work that way, but for the t student, it's going to be chaos. And he really has to organize it and structure it and compact it and condense it. And it's, it's, it, become, it becomes very, very limited. But that's how it can go in and create new life. From the student's side as well, he has to completely zoom in and become like a piece of ice, so to speak. In an akuda where, where uh, you know, ice also preserves, it's a preservative, and I'll be able to hold on to it with complete, uh, there's a certain element of self-nullification, of self effacement to really be able to be macabre. So on the Rosh Hachayis... He also basically has to sort it out. He has to make an order also. Otherwise it will be chaos. And yeah. He also has to make order, exactly. Yeah, in his brain. So what happens here is, what we're saying, that the journey from Seichel to Midas requires Kerach. It requires Chirik. It's a serious journey. It's a serious transformation. Even though it's the same water. The same water becomes Kerach and that Kerach melts into water. But nonetheless... It must go through the parsa, Like the Gdusha of Kodesh HaKadoshim could go into the Hegel, but it has to go through a curtain. It has to be preserved there. It's like an incubator, so to speak. Mm -hmm. The ice incubates the idea. It, it contains it, it holds on to it, and then it can transform it. And therefore, when it comes from the world of Seichel to the world of Midas, it's a very, very, it's a different creature, it's a different experience. And sometimes a person could be very afraid of the new experience. If you're not used to emotions, you don't know what it is. It's a very fearful experience. What does it look like? Many people shut down emotionally because it's too scary. It's a very, very, it's a scary experience. Because the seichel really is reduced into a chirik <laughs> before it goes into midas. Midas is mamish, a different world. It's a very different world. It's the world, the world of emotion. There are people who are intellectually brilliant. They don't know how to say, I love you. They can't. Emotionally, they just, they're brilliant. They could talk about love for years, but they don't know what it feels like. What does it feel like? And you have to ask yourself, do you know what it feels to be loved? What's the feeling? Not the idea of it. The idea we all understand, the feeling of it. It's really a different world. And sometimes as children, we didn't, a lot of people did not get that. They really don't know that feeling. They don't know the experience of it. They'll talk about it. They, they, they you know, my, I always say my grandmother, you know, a lot of the Russian Jews, Eastern European Jews suffered from what's called, uh, they had, you know, expressing emotions wasn't, uh, especially for Russians, was very difficult. Stalin helped it a lot because you couldn't say anything. You, you couldn't even say what time it is. You had to lie about everything. It was, it was a disastrous. So, uh, I come from that world, so I know a little bit about it. So whenever I came to my grandmother's home, she was a tzaddikus, but there were certain words she couldn't say. But she always said, "Eat." Yeshivitzchok s, and I had to eat the whole plate and s mer. And and then I realized, as I got older, it was her way of expressing deep affection. But babich yigas nein s mer. 
It was a way of saying, I can't get enough of you. I love you so much. What I heard was more chicken, more bread, more rice, more kishka, more kugel. I had to always be kugel, whatever. Right? So the language is a different language, and the way we process it often affects us very deeply. Because the world of emotion, it's really not the world of seichel. It's the world of an emotional experience. I know I'm talking about it in seichel de ways, but it's, you can't really speak about it in seichel de ways. We say every morning, Avas oila mahavtonu. Avas oila mahavtonu. Even those who are thinking what they're saying by davening, which I know is a rare commodity. Who has time? Medavshin endekin, especially Rishchodesh. But I'm not talking about Pirish Hamilis. Can you stop and take a deep breath and close your eyes and ask yourself, ask your heart, can I feel God's love? Not understand that He loves me and bring proof. You can bring Rayas, you can learn Chayvas Halavavas, Shara Bitochen, Shara Avas Hashem, and you'll have beautiful Schoimer. But Chayvas Halavavas, Chayvas Halavavas. There is the lave. What does that feel like? That's why we say later the same. Now, both components are very real. And learning in Yiddishkeit is, of course, pivotal and essential. But then there is the emotional experience. And the Balatanya says here, you got to go through a chirik. It beca- you beca- the seichel becomes really a chirik. In other words, it almost gets lost, and that's the fear. I'm afraid if I go to the world of Midas, yeah, what happens to my IQ? What happens to my brilliance? Some of us will not allow ourselves to go there because what's going to happen to me? What am I going to be? At least now, this person is a genius. Valedictorian. Talmud Chachem. Whatever he is. The world of Midas. Yeah. It, it, and, and it's a very, very powerful idea. Huh? <laughs> The Gemara says about Mitzi, Isha de Masa Mitzuya. For women, it's easier to cry than for men. So men used to interpret it because it's weakness. Strong people don't cry. Weak people cry. Today we know it's the other way around. Strong people cry. <laughs> when it's appropriate, they cry. Weak people, how can I cry? Well, I'm going to melt. If I cry, yeah, if I cry, I'm going to melt. I'm going to become a watery mikveh, a watery lake. But so the truth is that, yeah, there is a transformation from Seichel Midas. The translation goes through Kerach. It goes through Chirik. And what's the Chirik? The Chirik is where it becomes a Nekudah Mamash. And in that Nekudah, something new can be, something new can be created. The Nekudah then re-expands. The Nekudah re-expands. It doesn't expand the same thing that it can create. Right. Yeah. It's, a, it's new water. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Thus is in Seichel, and thus is in Midas. Yishakayach is in Seichel, and thus is in Midas. I think with, with what you say about the difficulty <laughs> with, the, with the rationalists in terms of Lundus and the Litvish kind of approach to it, I think that's what the Rav Rasolvechik was frustrated. Really, eh? really had a real real chum in his own show. As you know, he'd been exposed to a Chabad Malamed as a young know, so had a great... Chaslavich, yeah. And he really, I think felt fr- locked into a certain system that he felt he needed at some level to escape from. And when he spoke, you know, in terms of seeing this in emotions, it was a different look on his face. It was just very, very interesting. I think he felt, I don't say trapped, that's a strong word, but a little bit... Because his confined. Family, yeah. confined. His family wasn't, you know, his father was critical of what he was learning from the right. He was not learning, and, you know, I think he felt a little bit trapped in a little bit of So uh, the writer of Soloveitchik writes in Isha Halacha, that uh, the halachic man that uh, Shvu, uh, Yom Kippur once, <laughs> before Neila, yeah, he went out. My son, you met the one who's got all the, the whole chevra every year, Ad Hayom, he insists, I think, because I heard that story, it's such a shvon, every year we get to the end of Mincha, we get, he says, all right, let's go outside, let's take a look where the son is holding, the story had such an impact, such a powerful Remind me what was the story the story is, I, are we referring about the same story? He took to the roof and said, it's not the same sunset, this sunset is different. Than all yeah, yeah, yeah. He said it was before Ne'ila, he needed some fresh air. He was a young man, a bachir, a kid. 
I think a kid, and he went out, and it was a beautiful sunset. It was before Ne'ila, you know, late Yom Kippur afternoon, five, six. The sun was beginning to set, and he was just looking, you know, on, on the porch of the shul, the roof of the shul, I think the porch of the shul. And in, 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 this is in Ukraine, right? Where was it? In uh, Chaslavich. Who is Chaslavich? Belarus. Yeah, Belarus. Yeah, near Lita, near the Lithuanian. So he says his father, Reb Moshe Salavich, who was Reb Chaim Brisk, his oldest son, and was, you know, an, a Soloveitchik with everything that that name represents, comes out and he sees his son looking at the, at the sunset. And he says, for him it was a poetic, you know, glamorous experience, combination of science and astronomy and just regular human emotion mar- marveling at a beautiful sunset. And his father looks at him and he says, the Shkia Sachama of this day is not the sunset of any other day. Because the Gemara says in Shvu, there's a shita that soif hayoy mechaper. The sunset creates the atonement. So he says, as the sun sets, there is a chalois of atonement. So he says, that was my father. <laughs> he took a sunset and he turned it into a halachic term. It's a different chalois, you know? It became... A <laughs> I just told Rabbi's son, who has had a very interesting mahalach in life till he got to a very much of a good place. And Abhe Yomi slept me out. Minchat, because I told him the story, I had such a on him. Every year, Yom Kippur takes me out, Minchat, he says, let's go look at the sun. He said, that's us. And right where Rabbi Salvatric is trying to bring out is his father's way, in which, you know, mystical poetry was not part of the equation. He says once by Tkia Schaefer, it's an unbelievable story. There was a Baltekeya. Baltekeya was a Chabad Chosid. And before he took the Schaefer, Tchtsevent, Min he started to cry. So his father looks at him and says, Was Veinstu? So he tells this man, he says, Was Veinstu? What are you crying? When you shake Lulav, you also cry. Rachman Omar Tikum, Adav Blazen, Ishveinen. So the, the Rav Salvechik says, this chassid learned Lakut Taira, that's what he says. So he knew that Kia Shoifer is going out from the world of Tzimtzum to the world of Ein Saif. Min How could you not cry? How could you not cry? He says, for my father, he's like, God wants you to blow Shoifer. Don't cry about this world. This is the world. A very, very interesting stuff. That's why the, the, the <laughs> big Jewish philosopher, his name's Lawrence Kaplan, who came in Canada, when he wrote, a, uh, when he, they, they reviewed it or something, said about Isha Allah, he says, it's a misnagdish work of staggering proportions. That was the last <laughs> Misnagdish treatise of staggering order. It's their position. Their mahat goes in the order. They're about to say that. Uh, exactly. That's, that's for me was an equal. It's not uh, expensive or not because that I couldn't grasp. Yeah, but that's when all of me. But once they realize that's in order. That the ice organizes the molecules. That's a very good way of saying it. I, I, I actually I actually knew that that truth. I mean, I've read it, that the, that the molecules get uh, get organized. We're in water, they're in disarray, colliding with each other, bumping into each other, and there's no rhyme or reason, right. And that's a metaphor for infinity in a way, where it's no, there's no fragment in a positive way. It's just extremely powerful and intense. And the water itself warm. is H2O very... Yeah, of course. Yeah. Infinity doesn't mean there's no system. <laughs> it means that it's a system. In other words, water doesn't mean there's no system. It just means it's a system that I can't easily contain or make sense of. And by the way, water is the only... I think it's... I'm not... I don't quote me on that because I am not a physicist. Uh, this is a chemist, a chemist. But water is one of the few liquids that... Uh, so you certain temperature, right? That change the, completely the state. Usually, if you let's say if you froze the oil, right? It's it just it doesn't become a crystal, right? All right, it doesn't become a crystal. It's not doesn't change the state from liquid to solid. It basically it congeals. It's it just uh, it gets tighter. Yeah, it just gets tighter. Uh, the viscosity is different. That's that's. No. He's a physicist. Oil, are you not like a, not like a like glass. glass? Glass is not a crystal. It's, a, it's, it's not a crystal. It's basically, that's why you'll see it in 20 years. It will, it will liquefy itself, like it will melt on the corners or whatever it is. It's, it's just a very strong... Uh, 
This class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net slash donate.